I think you can learn a lot about the brand's philosophy by their cleansers. Are they expensive and luxurious? Are they affordable and basic? Are they designed to give you a spa experience or do they simply get the job done? Both have their time and place, which is why I have a cleanser wardrobe to suit my every mood and the latest addition to it is the Geek and Gorgeous 101 Jelly Joker Low pH Cleanser. Where does this one fit in the before mentioned categories and what does it tell me about the brand? Let's find out. Hi, I'm Dr. Anne. I'm a medical doctor with a passion for skincare that works. On this channel, we explore the science behind skin and do quick reviews, so you learn to pick exactly those products that work for your individual skin concern. So if this is something you're interested in, please consider subscribing and ring the notification bell. But first, let's hear what the Geek & Gorgeous 101 Jelly Joker Low pH Cleanser claims. A gentle but hard-working jelly cleanser that cleanses skin and dissolves water-soluble makeup while being respectful to the skin barrier. pH 5 to 5.4 Texture and scent As the name Jelly Joker gives away, the cleanser has a thicker gel texture. I get a faint glue-like scent, but I recently realized that this is how I describe most unscented skincare products, so it probably just smells like unscented skincare. Whatever the scent is, though, it does not linger or is notable upon application, so it probably doesn't really matter. How to use the cleanser you can use the cleanser both morning and night, but if you wear a lot of probably waterproof makeup, you might need a separate makeup remover. It is suitable to use around the eyes though, no stinging, so for my average everyday makeup it is more than enough. While I usually prefer to use my cleansers on dry skin and emulsify them after massaging them in for a little, I found the thicker texture of the Jelly Joker works best on slightly damp skin. Ingredients in the ingredient list, you will find gentle surfactants, some humectants and emollients, and panthenol and allantoin for soothing. Now, how does it compare to the Good Molecules Rose Water Daily Cleansing Gel? Similar in texture and price, Good Molecule uses rose water rather than panthenol and allantoin, a good example for a cleanser giving away a lot about the brand philosophy. Rose water doesn't have more than anecdotal evidence in terms of skincare benefits, yet features prominently in the name and claims, while panthenol has some good research behind it despite not being one of the trending ingredients, more of a workhorse than an attention catcher. And yes, I'll do an ingredient spotlight on it eventually. Quite a few of you already asked for it. If you leave that aside, both are lovely gel cleansers that work equally well and cost around the same. How does it compare to the Inkylist Oat Cleansing Balm? Different texture, similar price and most likely similar brand philosophy. The Inkylist is more of a balm slash oil cleanser, much richer and very well suited at makeup removal. It also uses oatmeal, another underrated ingredient I would love to see more of in my skincare with quite a bit of research behind it. Now, will this cleanser earn a place in my standing cleanser wardrobe? Possible not because it's outstanding in texture or because of what it does for my skin, no, mostly because the philosophy behind it speaks to me. No bullshit, no exaggeration, but ingredients that get the job done and have data behind them. Now tell me, do you have a cleanser wardrobe? And if yes, would this one get a place in it? You let me know in the comments below, I am going to link to more videos on the screen that I think you might enjoy now and we'll see you very soon with another one. Bye.